Hi, my name is Jared, and I'm a solution sales marketing expert here at Neo Analytics. Today we'll be exploring our beverage sales solution. This solution should help identify pain points and analyze different marketing strategies of boosting sales. Let's begin by taking a look at our sales overview page. As this view indicates, Seattle is facing sales problems. Sales are stagnant, and sales forecasts suggest sales should be much higher. In order to fix this problem, we need to know what's going wrong. We can click on Seattle in this view and drill down on that segment of the market. Here we can see that the biggest disparity between our forecasts and actual sales comes from the soft drink segment of the market, as indicated over here. We now know we have a problem and a little bit more about it. The question is, how do we solve it? We still need a little bit of information, and we'll start with our internal transactional and marketing data. This information includes such things as stock ups, price elasticity, radio advertising, and TV advertising, also SKU presence. In order to improve our model, we can take external data and add it into the model to see if that explains our sales variation. This external data set includes variables such as temperature, precipitation, household size, annual income, and competitor price gap. This additional information helps a bit. Variations explained improves to near 50%. Using IoT research and online activity data, we can boost our understanding of the variables affecting our model and explain nearly 89% of the variations, giving us a good enough understanding to approach an answer as to why our sales are below forecast. In order to understand why sales are down, we will analyze the impact of key sales drivers over the last month. We are looking at a waterfall chart of delta impact for the individual sales drivers over the last month. We can isolate and control some of these variables, and our model should predict what would happen if we isolate and adjust that individual driver. The largest negative driver is the competitive price gap, causing 7,598 less units to be sold than in the previous month. Let's first zero in on the sales impact of price gaps as they are our biggest problem. The question we really want the answer to is what the unintended consequences of adjusting the competitive price gap would be. We can see from this projection what would happen if we decrease the competitive price gap. The amount we adjust the price gap determines how beneficial it is to us. The variables we care about right now is profit. In this case, we can see that the price gap was reduced by 15%. We did achieve a 4.5 thousand incremental profit. We can also isolate other sales drivers to determine their effects on profit. In this case, let's examine social media. We want to know what will happen if we increase social media engagement. The impact on sales is determined by what level of engagement we invest in. This model predicts that if social media is increased, we can increase it by 20%, we will achieve a 12.6% thousand incremental profit. Now let's see what would happen if we spent more on advertisement. This is the impact on physical sales if we increase advertising by different levels. The model predicts the impact on profit if we increase advertising by 20% would be 7.1 thousand. This solution can also help us adjust our product assortment. Optimizing product assortment can go a long way to increasing revenue. We can use the SKU sales lift to see where we have SKUs that are underselling and wasting space and replace them with hit high potential hidden star SKUs. In this graph, each dot represents a SKU. These SKUs with negative lift sales lift, the red ones, can re be replaced. They decrease the total sales because of cannibalization. Getting the right SKUs into distribution will make a big difference. Let's select this underperforming SKU. 
Down here we can see more details about it. Here are suggestions for the replacement of the skew. The model over here uh, suggests that we could achieve the highest incremental physical sales if we replace the bad skew with this specific skew. This model can also help us forecast future sales data with, with and without improvements. This graph indicates what would happen if we take no action. Sales will continue sliding down and we will not improve. Now within the budget constraints, we can also select other actions and see what would change if we select those. So I'll select this one first and this one second. And over here we can see the overall physical impact on sales if we take these recommended actions. As you can see, it increases by quite a bit. This concludes our brief tour of this demo. Please contact Neil Analytics if you have any further questions.